Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast of Shemaine's Model Health. I hope you're all keeping super well this morning. This is our first podcast of 2020. Not only a new year, but a new decade. It's insane. And it's also my birthday today. So I was not only super busy with the start of a new year, I'm also holding out to release the first podcast of this new decade on my birthday. So this podcast is specifically focused on people who want to optimize their long term health and weight goals and pretty much find out what their body is doing and trying to say to them. So welcome, welcome. This week, we are at um, looking at exercise and reasons you should exercise in 2020. Again, not just for the new year, but for the decade ahead. Um, As always, the information provided in these podcasts is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please do consult with your healthcare professional before you implement any lifestyle changes. Okay, so in this first episode of 2020, we're going to briefly look at some of the great, awesome reasons to add in exercise into your new year. Why should we exercise? What benefit is it going to give us? Um, And there's a lot of hype around exercise, especially at this time of year. Lots of new faces, not only in the gym, but out walking too on days that it's not minus 40. Um, And all of the hype to get fit, look good, lose weight, it's pretty prevalent right now. So some people may not believe it, but I was never much into exercising when I was young. I did play camogie for a few years, which is the female style of hurling, which is part of the GAA, which is a total Irish thing that you can Google. Um, Very fast, very violent sport, but I was goalie. So I'm not sure if that counted too much. Like there was a tiny bit of movement and running around. But in general, goalies don't move like they would or people would in other positions. Um, But apart from that, I did nothing. I hated PE. Um, Like I literally would do anything to get out of it. I hated running. I guess I didn't see the value in it. And I definitely didn't enjoy how uncomfortable it made me feel, especially that lactic acid buildup around the chest and the lungs. I hated that. Um... But look at me now, I love to exercise. But if you were like me where where exercise, or if you are still like where I was, where exercise invokes bad feelings or a sense of fear in you, then how about we start looking at something simple first? We start by switching your mindset to, I'm not exercising, I'm just moving more. I'm moving this wonderful, strong body of mine. Um, So that lets us start to take control of some of that negativity. You're moving this wonderful body that you were gifted and true movement, you are going to power it like a battery so that it runs or functions a lot better. Um, Because movement does create energy and the more energy we have, the more movement we'll do and the better we'll feel. So there's one reason right there, or maybe even two. But movement definitely um, activates the Krebs cycle and causes us to produce more energy and move a lot better. So that's your reason that we will start off with. So then when we start moving more, we also improve our mood. And people's mood is a big topic nowadays with the way society is, the winter, so onset of um, seasonal depression, post-traumatic stress, all that sort of stuff. But moving can help improve our mood. Exercise causes the body to produce and release dopamine, norepinephrine and serotonin. And these brain chemicals play an important part in regulating your mood. Exercise causes the release of endorphins. And endorphins, these trigger a positive feeling in your body, similar to that of morphine, um, which is why some people can get slightly addicted to exercise. 
For example, that feeling that follows a run or a really epic workout is often described as euphoric. Um, That feeling known as runner's high can be accompanied by a positive and energized outlook on life in general. So endorphins act as anal which means they diminish the perception of pain. They also act as sedatives. So they're manufactured in your brain, your spinal cord and many other parts of your body and released in response to brain chemicals called neurotransmitters. Um, Not to get too sciencey, but these are neuron receptors. These endorphins, they're neuron receptors where they bind to the same kind of neuron receptors that pain medicines would bind to but unlike morphine the activation of these receptors by the body's endorphins does not lead to addiction or dependence but we can see how people can get that high feeling and somewhat addicted to exercising constantly i know some people are like what who in their right mind is addicted to exercise and then there's some of you that are saying yeah totally like i feel terrible when i don't work out and to you guys that don't quite understand the feeling it's just a matter of getting into your groove getting a habit of exercising and then you get to reap excuse me reap these rewards and all these feel good feelings of feeling great feeling accomplished feelings of energy these all help you feel motivated to move more and in that beautiful cycle then you'll have even more energy so so far looking at why we should exercise we're creating more energy we're feeling better and we're managing hormones and motivation a lot better Now exercise, especially resistance training and high power output training, causes the release of adrenaline. And adrenaline causes us to tap into our fat stores for energy. Um, It increases our heart rate, it increases our blood pressure, it expands the air passages of the lungs, it enlarges the pupil of the eye, um, and all these for a short time. which allows the body to redistribute blood to where it should be going so improving circulation redistributing blood to the muscles and altering the body's metabolism so as to maximize blood glucose levels and blood flow a lot of that going to the brain so you're also helping with cognitive performance brain function um, tapping into your fat stores a lot of people don't know that when you start to exercise especially in a fasted state you tap in or you release adrenaline a lot quicker and that allows you to tap into your fat stores to fuel that workout a lot of people don't know that but that's how you can get this awesome what we call the pump going and you can feel incredible after it and that's that adrenaline So the other physiological benefits of movement include supporting your lymphatic system. This system is basically our drainage system for the whole body. And I've done a podcast on all of this um, swelling and inflammation and circulation. I can't remember what it's called, but look back and you'll find it. And this drainage system is a very important part of our detoxification pathways. Any cellular waste, toxins, viral and bacterial particles, they get removed out of the body in our lymphatic fluid. Except the lymphatic system doesn't have its own pump. It needs us to help that lymphatic fluid to get to our kidneys and our lungs for excretion. And how do we do that? Well, we got to create our own pump and you guessed it, we do that through movement and muscle contraction. And this is why we can see swelling in our feet or our lower legs at the end of the day or experience aches and pains in our feet or a lot of gout will show itself in our feet because that's the first place that pooling of toxins starts. Um, And especially if we don't move a lot, we can get that pooling in the lower legs. So we need to move to keep everything pumping and flowing back to our excretory organs so when we move and support our lymphatic system we are helping to cleanse our body and help the detox pathways which in turn helps not only with our blood flow but it also helps with our immune system of course because we're remu- we're helping our body excrete or remove those toxins so 
also just while we're here in regards to the whole lymphatic system and lymphatic fluids if you have issues with your legs varicose veins spider veins cellulite swelling edema water retention all that stuff one of the best things you can do is walk and move a lot especially walking dancing rebounding is awesome uh, they can be very helpful for the lymphatic system and then any inversion moves that is going to help bring blood flow back towards your heart which is our main pump so more movement equals more breathing and not a lot of people understand the importance of breathing properly more effective and more breathing means more fat burning because the more we exhale carbon the more carbon bonds we break down and if you're in my biohacking group or follow me you'll know that fat is a long chain of carbons and as we break down those carbons and remove them from our body that is fat we're breaking down and removing Breathing is also very, very important for the immune system, very important for cellular and mitochondrial health, like so, so important. Practicing specific breathing techniques when you're exercising, trying to get into the habit of breathing just through your nose, taking long exhales, practicing holding your breath for extended periods of time. These are all very, very beneficial for your health overall and for that fat burning system okay so the venous system is another system that is highly impacted by movement and the venous system again it doesn't have our own pump and it kind of goes hand in hand with our lymphatic system so it doesn't have its own pump meaning it needs help from our muscle contractions to help pump blood back to our heart through our venous system so venous system being our veins this is where we see people run into problems from leading a sedentary lifestyle again where we get those varicose veins the spider veins the aches and the pains in our legs the blood clots right up to cardiovascular health so the venous system is the blood flow the lymphatic system is the toxins and the buildup of waste products and both need to be moving correct are you going to see these negative side effects and of course the venous system is going to have that impact on cardiovascular health um, they all depend on us moving blood through our veins and around our body so our whole body is dependent on these systems and these systems are dependent on us moving and this is why many people are recommended to move around on a plane or wear compression socks as well because not only is the air pressure changed on the body but also the blood flow then gets slowed down a lot because of that pressure and because we're not moving as much so just back to the immune system for a minute because not a lot of people know this unless you follow me um, in the immune system <laughs> When we look at muscles, we understand that skeletal muscle is more than just about the aesthetics, like how you look and performance. It's also an amino acid reserve. And we know that amino acids are the building blocks of protein, right? But they are also the backbone to your immune system, your hormones, your red and white blood cells, your kidneys, your hair, like everything. You need amino acids. So the more or the more sufficient muscle mass that you have the better the ability to store extra amino acids that you have so when we have some sort of an insult or an injury or an insult or an illness we are able to quickly create the antibodies we need to attack, to heal, to regenerate, to prevent or fight off our illness. So if you think of muscles as the storage house for your amino acids or the building blocks of life, the bigger your muscles are, the more resilient you're going to be to illness or injury or anything like that because you can store more amino acids in those muscles. So our muscles speak directly to every organ and system in our body. So having a nice muscle mass helps you function a lot more optimally. So 
again a quick recap on those benefits we get from exercise are circulation super important heart health new brain cells there's a lot of studies that show resistance training helps us build new brain cells so the more you lift weights the more new brain cells you create Uh, more mitochondria we know that the more muscles you have the more mitochondria you have the more you exercise in a fasted state the more you convert white fat tissue to brown fat tissue and brown fat tissue has more mitochondria in it the mitochondria being your powerhouses the more mitochondria you have in a fat cell the more you have the ability to break down that fat Uh, exercise helps us sleep better especially early morning exercise where your cortisol is already high exercise boosts confidence and self-esteem gives us that stronger immune system gives us those better moods gives us more resiliency towards stress pretty much for all of what I've said between the immune system the hormones confidence the self-esteem the feeling strong feeling that you can take on anything so more resilience on not just a physiological level but a psychological level as well increased fat burning of course from exercise um, and then of course the physical appearance so one can look a lot better from adding in more movement and exercise to their lifestyle now in saying that at the start of the year and if you're brand new to exercise or maybe you've been out of the game for a while nobody expects you to run a marathon or complete a spartan race within a few days or a few weeks that's insane so that's not realistic and if you set a goal Um, or expectation that high you're probably going to quit pretty fast or at the first hurdle you come across because you've set the bar too high Bill Gates who co-founded Microsoft said people overestimate what they can achieve in a week and underestimate what they can achieve in a year and I love that saying and I remind my clients of that all the time Rome wasn't built in a day and slow and steady wins the race you slowly make positive progression every day every week and before you know it you're going to be where you are so look it won't be easy when you start adding more movement into your life but if you keep at it and you're consistent in a year's time I promise you you will be way ahead of where you are now but if you expect all the changes to be done and happen quickly chances are you won't keep up with it and a year's time you'll have nothing to show for yourself and probably feel even worse in yourself so better to have realistic expectations break down your big goal into small increments small goals that are achievable and then come next december say you can look back and see just how far you've come i have no doubt that you'll be pleasantly surprised just want to remind you of fat loss if fat loss is your goal this year and some people have very unrealistic expectations or goals around fat loss where they're expecting to lose four pounds a week or three pounds and anything less they're disappointed honestly if you lost a half a pound or a pound a week every week for this year you will have lost approximately by December if you lose half a pound a week you're going to be about 25 pounds down if you lose a pound every week you're going to be 52 pounds down that's insane if you were to lose four pounds every week there will probably be none of you left by December so look at it like that like it's these slow consistent changes that get us where we want to be and stay in the long term okay I hope you guys found this very enlightening and just highlighted the fact that we don't just exercise to burn fat or to keep the joints lubricated that there's a lot a lot of other very awesome reasons that you should add in more exercise or movement to your new year so I wish you all the best of luck in this new year. Of course, I'm going to continue to pump out these episodes. I hope you will share them with as many people as you can. It helps me really 
reach the masses and spread the word of changing and optimizing health um, and it would be an awesome birthday gift for me if you would share or even leave a review which also helps me a lot and I appreciate it because it encourages me to keep going otherwise enjoy the rest of your week stay safe stay warm and I'll chat to you soon bye bye